Hello and welcome back, I'm Bebo Joe and this is a test for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Up until recently, up until the research, maintenance and waste update, I didn't think that you had to worry about your road traffic network, that the throughput was fine and once you have too much to move, you will just put it on the rail and it will be fine. But with all the waste trucks that are moving around now, the inefficiencies that the game has, if you want to use personal cars, if you have other transportation going on, your distribution offices, the maintenance that comes with construction offices now, there are areas that easily get overloaded with traffic. Not continuous traffic, but definitely situations where you have a lot more vehicles than your infrastructure can actually handle. I saw that firsthand in Season 8. So, I wanted to know... Is there a way to fix this? Can the game support better infrastructure, better intersections? And I found 40 different iterations of different intersections with a clear winner, a clear group of winners, and many, many problems that I came across in the meantime. Let's see how I set this up and then let's look at the scenarios. So this is an experiment and as such, it's very important to have constraints around what you're actually trying to do here. So what I have is four groups, A, A, B, C, and D, and each of them have the exact same number of lines going from um, one to another. That means in this situation, we have six lines of each cargo type and each section for each cargo type is broken down by this. There's an oil loading, unloading, there's an aggregate loading, there's a bus station and two cargo stations, and all of them look the same. That's why I have six going to all directions. What I also have is um, the left side going to the left group, the middle going straight through, and the right side going to the right group. That is true for all of them. Each line only has two stations. One goes out and one comes back. So um, what that means is the intersection over here is qu equally loaded in all directions. And sometimes someone will cross here, cross multiple lanes, and sometimes it will just take the tight turn and not cross any lanes. And I just wanted this to be the worst case scenario for uh, all the vehicles that you may have running around in your system. So we have a total of six, 12, 18, 24 regular lines, each with six vehicles. So that's a lot. Plus I have these fuel lines. The fuel lines are actually my my test group, the group that I'm trying to use to figure out how well an infrastructure intersection is actually moving the traffic that gets to it. And this is how I did that part. Initially, I ran this with just the fuel tankers, and those are all the little red trucks here, with, just across the intersection here with no signs, no signals, no nothing to see what they can do. Without traffic, they were able to move 1,700 tons of fuel. That is my best case scenario. 1,700 tons of fuel is what I calculated in November. Why November? All my intersections are set up at the end of September. That's when they're built and ready to go. And then I let the traffic go for the whole month of October. Uh, in October, they just get bedded in. They create a little bit of traffic here and there. They get figured out where they're going. And at the end of October, we should see something similar to this, where the traffic is really everywhere. It's not just coming from one site, which was important to me. And once you have this set up, I just let November run. And November is the month that I take uh, to see how much we moved, how much we uh, purchased, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, how well the in uh, intersection was working. And that's how I got 1,700 tons for oil in the first setup. That's 155 trips off the red trucks. And I can tell you, none of the intersections got 100%, but I get really close to 75%. That's the winner. I have a group that's really well, just around 70%, which is awesome. And then I have a lot of things that just don't work and the game doesn't really support very well. So let's jump into all the different scenarios. I have 40 to go through. I'm just gonna pick a couple. Uh, hopefully you like what you see. We should start with the first thing. This is the intersection that probably most of us have, the four-way intersection. With all the traffic that's on here, if I don't run any signals, any lights, anything else on here, I get 33%. I get 561 tons of fuel transported, nothing more, nothing less. That is a third. That is almost the worst. It is not the worst because there's some intersection that actually get completely locked. But I thought it would be interesting to know that this intersection does about a third at the traffic level that we have set up here. So that's kind of awful. You can get a little better if you add lights. And for lights, it's actually important that you understand that you can set different intervals. It's between zero and 60 seconds. Um, and I played with them. I found that for a four-way intersection, the best 
setting was 10 seconds and I got up to 726 tons, which is almost uh, 40, 43%. Um, of efficiency going through, which is not awful, which is not bad. I did find that most of the different settings um, weren't completely even all the time. So sometimes you get a little more, sometimes a little less. So the numbers that I give you just add one to two percent uh, plus minus to that, and that will give you a good, a uh, good result. But yeah, this one pretty much at the bottom, no surprise there. But um, it's a start. So now we know that. What is at the bottom? You may ask. Well, the worst is the roundabout. Nothing in the roundabout works well enough where you can actually guarantee that it works because this has run now for less than two weeks in game and it's completely blocked, completely. And I did play with the different, different speeds. It happens at all speeds. The game is not very good at using both lanes. That's, that's the main problem. As you can see here, the second lane is mostly not used. It doesn't matter where they're going. And eventually that blocks everything and you cannot assign lanes to only be turn lanes so if a roundabout the roundabout gets blocked off in all situations where you're not using any signs or any priority roads or anything like that i did try to use single lanes uh, as slip lanes that just go around here like that the problem with slip lanes is they don't always work they they sometimes just connect so weird and don't tell you what's wrong with them that they won't do it and when I set that up the, the last time, they just didn't use the roundabout. They just went around the roundabout with the one lane roads all the time. And that wasn't helpful either. So the roundabout sadly does not work unless you give it all the signs that it needs. And if you give it signs, you have to do it like this. Uh, sign up your uh, intersection and then expand the intersection to be this. Make sure that the roundabout section is the main road, the priority road, otherwise it's not gonna work. And you have to do this for all sections of the roundabout. If you do it this way, you can get slightly better than the four-way intersection basics. I got to 676, which is almost 40% efficiency. It's not very good. It's 29 on my list. The four-way roundabout with 10-second lights was 24. So the roundabout itself, sadly for high traffic, does not work at all in this game. So stay away from it. Next up is a basic cloverleaf with only normal road junctions, no interstate system. The problem here was this. You see these trucks? They are turning around where they shouldn't. So they're going this way instead of going all the way around here and then making it onto the road there. There's no real sign why they don't do it. Um, but the lane is just set up this way and it's just deciding this is the way I want to go. So the basic cloverleaf has this problem and I haven't found a good way around that, especially if you want to use distribution offices or non-direct lines, because with direct lines, you can at least set a waypoint. Here you can't, you have to hope that they figure it out. And because of that, this cloverleaf at this setup is not very good. It's number 20 in our list of 40. It has a throughput of 781 tons and it's almost 46% efficiency. If you, however, really want to use a cloverleaf, there is an answer. If you insist on using a cloverleaf, this is how you have to set it up. You need an interstate or a real highway with two one-way roads, both directions, so four one-way roads, uh, that are not connected in the middle anywhere that the vehicles can't just cross over you don't need signs for this with signs you can try it every once in a while you can make it a little better than uh, with that but you don't need signs just set it up like this the only thing that i have to add is if this section is too short trucks will still try to turn around and take the one-way road instead of going through the middle which is super annoying but that's how the game does it right now so make sure that you have a little extra buffer uh, for your for your one lane roads um, on all sides of the cloverleaf intersection, which makes it a really, really large intersection. But if you set it up this way, if it actually fits where you are, this is number six in my list. It gets 1177 tons of fuel transported, which is 69% efficiency. It's really, really good. And it's one of the simpler ones to set up, but because of the iffiness with the extended one-way routes, it's not the best solution for the four-way intersection that I that we started from because it is so compact and this one is so large. But it's a good solution for interstate problems. Now to something a little different. This is the elevated roundabout with slip junctions or slip lanes. Very important. So what do we have going on here? In the middle there's a roundabout. Below runs one highway. Above it runs the other highway. Uh, all highways are connected to the roundabout, but also the highways themselves are connected via slip junctions slip lanes to other pieces. Why? 
This is still a roundabout. This roundabout will still clog up if you don't have these slip lines, and that's completely useless. Um, so you have to do this. You can also throw some signs in there, but they really still clog up relatively badly, so it doesn't help you all the time. But you can get this scenario set up and running, and then you can't. You, you should probably should run some uh, you know, some signs in there actually, uh, and then you can get a really good result. I got the elevated roundabout with slips. So just this lane and slips and signs to be number uh, seven and eight in my list with 1177 and 1176 uh, tons of fuel transported. That is 69% efficiency, which is great. And this junction, I will say, is not ugly. You can make it prettier than I did it here, but overall, this junction just says something. It's just like this, this is an important inter uh, intersection of our logistics system. But again, it's a rather large setup and it has a lot of stuff going on that we have to set up and it takes a really long time, a lot of space, and maybe um, it's something that you that you not wanna, wanna do there. What I did here a little bit is use a normal two lane highway that is connected via two one way routes, uh, roads coming from that section. The problem is the game is not good at using both of these roads. So as you can see, this guy is probably gonna cross over right away onto this lane. Nobody's actually gonna use a second lane for most of the time. So um, that's a little, little unfortunate, but it is what it is and it works pretty well. To something else a little different. This is called a turbine or windmill intersection. And it's a it becomes a turbine if you just extend these routes underneath this path a little bit and then connect it into this highway on the other side. But um, they're very similar. They're kind of pretty, they're kind of hard to set up, they take a lot of room, but they are relatively effective as a default scenario. It's still an intersection, it is less effective than a cloverleaf and elevated roundabout, but it is more effective than a lot. Uh, the turbine right now for me is number 11 on my list of tests, and uh, it transported 1168 tons, which is 68% efficiency, so it's in the upper tier off the intersections that you can build. It's pretty, it's nice. I wanted to show you how it looks and what you have to do. There's a bunch of bridges here and a bunch of tun no, no tunnels yet, but you could set it up many different ways and make it prettier than what this is. But it doesn't really get locked up, uh, which is awesome for the intersections that we have here. Let's talk about one of the most efficient groups of interchanges. This is a diamond. Doesn't look like much right now, but um, it has two one-way uh, interstate systems here. It has one that is more determined to be the main route, which doesn't have any crossover going on here, and one that's more side route that does have crossover happening over here. What this group of diamonds does, and I'll show you a couple more uh, options for this one, it does really well with, without doing anything else. And you can make these relatively small. You don't have to make them as big as I have it here. But this one, for example, is number five in my list. It does 1,210 tons of fuel. It has almost a 70, it has 71% efficiency and it runs really, really well. Right now it looks like it clogs up here a little bit, but that's because we're really early in the system. Later on when traffic flows, um, you don't see a lot of clogging happening, so my November time was really, really, really good. But there are more diamond versions uh, besides this one. This is the diverging diamond. If you've never seen it before, it really just crosses the one-way roads that uh, for your right side driving turns into left side driving just for a little bit back to right side driving. And that is so that you reduced all your crossover points to here and here. Everything else does not have to cross over anything, so traffic flows really, really well in this system. Um, the diverging diamonds with the default settings, with signs or with signals, all of them perform exceptionally well. They're number nine, 10, and 12 in my list. They all have about 68 and 69% efficiency. And the, the game seems to really like this. Also, if you wanna set these up with signals, there's one specialty, you have to go in here, and then you have to select generate cycle with one active green lane. Uh, like so, because the lights themselves need to be um, opposite of each other, otherwise it's not going to work. But once you do that, the diverging diamonds work ex exceptionally well. I was very surprised by this. And there are a bunch of subgroups of this. One big one really didn't work, which was the dumbbell one that had roundabouts at the end. They look like this. And because they have roundabouts, they just don't work. It's it's an option, but they will get locked up really, really fast. And once you're in that situation, just nothing's gonna work anymore. And 
you're back to the same problem. You see this roundabout right here? It's starting to get locked up. We already have the middle lane blocked and stuff is just not going to move anymore. So most of the diamonds were awesome. The dumbbell uh, diamond, diverging diamond here is not, was not very helpful. This is still part of the diamond families. This is a single point urban interchange. Single point with slip lanes. The slip lanes were very important, but um, it is probably the most compact intersection that I was able to build out of all the scenarios that I had. And it is number three in my list. It is at 72% efficiency, 1,221 tons of oil got transported. So this one is really high on my list. The only problem is you do have to go underground here. Otherwise, you cannot have the single point where I have it. You can go a lot more fancy about this. Um, you can set up some turn lanes and some other things if you really want to try very hard. But this by far is the best smallest interchange that I had uh, had found. So I'm happy to report that this is probably one that you should build. It's not very hard to build, although the diamond ones and the diverging diamonds are also very easy to build and you don't have to maintain them very well. But these run really, really well. So there's one more group of interchanges that I haven't shown yet that takes slots number one and two in the group and we're gonna go there now. And the winner is the stack. The stack is by far the biggest interchange that I had to make, but it does work the best. Out of all the interchanges I had, this one takes up the most space. We are on four different levels. We have an underground highway, we have an above ground highway, and two sections of bridges for slip lanes or for connections everywhere. But this one by far performs the best out of the whole system. We got to 1,254 tons of oil. That is almost a 74% efficiency. That is the top of the list. Um, I'm using clever lanes here, which are split up into a single lane coming out here and a single lane coming out here. But as you saw with that truck, the game is not very good at just continuing straight on and then just merging when appropriate. It just doesn't use this part of the intersection, which is a little annoying. But um, yeah, 74%. If you just built the stack without any fancy setup, just the default, no signs, no signals, no nothing, you still get 1,248 tons of oil, which is just a rounding error in the end. So still 73, 74% off efficiency, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, this is the best and the biggest, and it should perform the best because it does not have any crossover anywhere, any slowdown, anything funky at all. The problem is, we don't have one lane uh, bridges. So you will always have to build something like this unless you want to get really clever, combine these in a way that now connects all the intersections and then the game will probably do something else silly. But this is the winner. This is the best one. If you can, maybe build one of these and then decide that you probably rather want to just build a diamond again because they're still super efficient and just fine for what we need to do. The end is near, but I do have some final thoughts for you. So what is the best interchange intersection that you can build? It is really highly dependent on the space that you have. If you don't have any space, a single point um, urban interchange seems to be the best one in my opinion. Um, there may be one that I've missed that you know about that you wanna use here, but that's what I came up with. I used slip lanes on the four-way intersection and it just didn't do what it was supposed to do. The, the one-way roads connect funny to your normal roads sometimes and you won't know that it was connected funny until you actually build it and stuff doesn't work. So I, I would like to stay away from one-way roads as much as possible. Sorry, not one-way, one-lane roads, these guys right here. As much as possible, if you can, experiment with them, figure out what they do. But there are still some problems that would hopefully get fixed eventually. I did ask Peter about several different things of how to improve traffic management. One of them is just dedicated turn lanes. If you could at least have a sign for that, that would help a lot. But um, that was over a week ago and he hasn't gotten back to me, so I'm not sure if that's going to happen, especially since I know that the road system itself in code is not up to par and Peter is not very happy with it, but I'm not sure that there's going to be time and budget uh, spend on fixing that down the road uh, because we're pretty far uh, to the end. So... Um, that's one thing. The other thing is this test, this experiment was specifically set up for enormously high traffic volumes, which you can't see right now, but we do have 
over 150 vehicles going through here all the time consistently, which you won't have in a normal Republic because you have distribution officers only bringing in certain things all the time. You have construction officers just turning on and off and only delivering some things all the time. This is equivalent to more than 12 or 15 construction officers running all the time, every time, forever with all their vehicles. And that's just not what we have going on in most republics. Another thing, on a four-way intersection, you can simply put priority signs if you have a road that has most of your traffic. That helps a lot, but the other road almost never gets to go at that point, so be aware of that. But there are other solutions to your traffic problems that are not just junctions that you have to, um, that you have to discover here. So Everything is highly modifiable and changeable depending on your specific scenario. And I would love to hear what you came up with in your scenario and why yours works and why the things here just didn't help you. And that's totally fine. I, I would love to hear what you guys came up with for anything that you want to build. Um, and maybe I can present that in a different scenario. I just know this to me looks pretty. I could have made it a little prettier, but uh, the traffic flow itself, there's not a lot of stopping going on. I really don't like that this junction up here keeps having vehicles to stop there, but that's just part of the game. You cannot optimize past what the game allows you to do. So yeah, that's where I'm sitting. Um, this took me over a week to, to put together, so I hope you appreciate that. If you did, like, subscribe. I do have a Patreon, a couple other, uh, and membership, I guess, um, if you want to join me there. Um, but yeah, this was the interchange, intersection, intercontinental, no, uh, thing that I wanted to put together, and now I know the answer. Diamonds are probably my way forward. Uh, it works in most situations. All you have to do is really turn your single lane into a multi-lane. And here's a thing that you can do. I did play with that, but it didn't work as well because the diamonds are not... Uh, the traffic on diamonds is not smart enough to only use single lanes. But what you can do is you could have a piece of road, looks like this, and then you decide, oh no, I need to put a diamond in. You just remove a little bit in the middle, and then you connect your single lane roads like this, so now you don't have a crossing or a way for vehicles to cross over in the middle anymore. They may still cross at the end or at the next node, but this is a, a way around uh, going full bore on two-way highways. And this will work just fine for smaller traffic volumes. As big as the traffic volume that I have here, I just simply always loaded up um, the lanes that I had too much, and I do need, I do need this. The diverging diamond piece has to be two two-lane one-ways. Otherwise, it just gets overloaded really, really fast, even if the game is not very good at using both sides. But there we are. Uh, quick thing, I almost forgot. All the results, everything that I did for research, all those things are all going to be down in the description. Just a Google link if you want to look at them, if you want to do your own numbers. If you have questions about those, all 40 results are in there with some pictures, with some other things. So hopefully that all makes sense and gives you a chance to tell me what I did wrong, where I did it wrong. By the way, this is another Diamond Junction I tried with dedicated turn lanes, uh, but the game is just not good enough to understand exactly what I wanted to do. But it's cute, right? That's, that's, my, that's my spiel. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you appreciated this, and I will see you again, uh, again next time. Bye-bye.